Get ready to get inspired. This, this is the Go for the Goldie podcast. Hello, welcome to another week here. It's Monday, August 10th, 2020. It's a new week. I got a new microphone. And we have a new, yet another inspiring athlete joining me today, Kim Tomasic, the 2017 Buffalo Runner of the Year, joining us from Buffalo, New York. Kim, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm doing great. As best as you can for a Monday. No? <laughs> yeah. Well, I hear Kim, you. I, uh, we, we've known each other for a bit. Um, I, I remember um, one of my first races I went to, I saw you, and I've never told you this. Really? I, I, never, <laughs> I never told you this, so you actually served as an inspiration for me because I always saw runners as, like, you know, tall, lanky. If you weren't that, you weren't going to be a good runner. And I saw you mm-hmm. crush the race that I was at, and I was like, holy cow. This girl is incredible and like she's not tall. I can do this. You know what I mean? So I never told you that. But yes, you you served as a big wow. inspiration for me. So I'm very honored that you decided that uh, you know, to to come on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think right off the bat, um, 2017 Buffalo Runner of the Year. Um, that is one hell of an accomplishment. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I want to kind of dive into that right off the bat because I just want to like kind of set the tone as to what exactly sure. that entails, you know, doing that. So if you could just kind of maybe explain in a little bit more detail what that what that means. Yeah, so the the Buffalo News every year puts on a series of races that you can enter and by where, how you place, the top 10 male and female get a certain amount of points. So the higher you place, the more points you get. And then at the end of the year, uh, and there's an online website that tallies up how many points you've scored in the series of races. And whoever gets has the most points, male and female, is deemed like the Buffalo, Buffalo News Runner of the Year. And these races stem from like a one mile race to a half marathon. And there's a 10K and an 8K and 5Ks all in there. So you have to show up and pretty much be able to do well every distance. So I, I didn't do all the races in the series, but I did enough and placed well enough to earn the most amount of points by a, a landslide. So half of it's like just being consistent and the other half is performing well. And, uh, I don't know if I want to do that again. It was very exhausting. <laughs> it's one of those that you did it, time to move on, time to conquer the other, the, yeah. the next mountain, right? Races started in, I think, March until the turkey trot in November. So you had to be fit for most of the year. And um, yeah, I will even say like those even weren't my fastest times compared to how I am now, but that was quite an accomplishment because of how much effort it took. <laughs> and that's, you know, I think, with me moving away, I, I think I took for granted when I lived in Buffalo how tight and how many opportunities there are, like the running community is in Buffalo. I mean, you're talking three, four races a weekend if you're really looking for them, you know, throughout the entire year. I mean, you're talking December, January, February. There's races every weekend, even during the winter months, you know. And um, I guess the idea that Buffalo, you know, runner of the year is to kind of show – versatility in running you know it's not the buffalo one mile of the year it's not the buffalo 5k of the year it's to show that you can compete at a high level at the one mile all the way up to the half marathon and everything in between is that kind of the idea of it yeah definitely that's cool. i say so that's that's really cool that you did that and uh what i'll do is um do you i, I know you sent me the picture do you have like if you could maybe dig up a post or something like that, I could maybe link to your social media, like that specific post, you know what I mean? So people can check it out yeah. and see what that looks like. Cause I definitely can search. I know there was an article in the Buffalo news that I actually might still have that like my grandpa sent me and saved of my picture in the Buffalo news. So I'll definitely dig that up. For yeah, you. that would be great because I don't know if you've seen, but what I like to do is, um, you know, obviously we've talked about the idea of this show and, you know, what, what the purpose is to kind of serve as inspiration for people. So I put in the show notes after the show, you know, different links to your social media channels, or if you wanted to get involved in, you know, different kinds of like USA, um, you know, like track and field to see what events there are across the country and 
Um, so kind of serve as a central feel focal point and for inspiration. So um, I'll link all your social media accounts and everything once we're done oh. here and they can see yeah. all your badass stuff that you've done. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think something cool I want to talk about, um, there's the, the, the Buffalo corporate challenge and well, I mean, it's the corporate challenge. Um, it's this race that is done throughout the entire world. I mean, it's, it's a really huge race and it's, a, it's a tour that goes all over the place and it's the, you know, corporations, they join it and you kind of, it's, it's a big day in Buffalo and I'm sure it is that way, you know, all, all across it, you know, every stop on the tour that it goes to. Um, but how many people are in the Buffalo one? You know, oh gosh, like ten thousand people. Yeah, it's it's huge. It's huge, so. and that's huge for Buffalo yeah. especially. Um, yeah. And that actually served as that was the first race that I ever did, and I hated it, and I hated running, and <laughs> I got done with that. But then I kind of started to it started to manifest. You know, I was like, I like this idea of you know, challenging myself, and you start. Well, you know, if I didn't have to zigzag as much at the beginning or, you know, maybe if I like trained a little bit, I could get a minute faster. And that slippery slope of like how good you could get, you know, kind of really encouraged me to keep on going and training. So having said all that, 10,000 people, it's a big day in Delaware Park in Buffalo. Um, talk about the picture that's on the cover of this episode. What is that picture? Uh, so... That I believe is the last year I, re- I won it in 2019. So that was my second time winning it. And I love to preface that in 2018, 2019, I ran for Batavia Downs or Western OTV. And I also, the month, a month after these races, won the Genesee County Corporate Challenge two years in a row too. Um, it's called the Glow Corporate Challenge. It's for like uh, Genesee Livingston, Orlean, the Wyoming County. I also won those. So it was kind of crazy that I won Buffalo and the um, Glow Corporate Cup two years in a row. Just an absolute uh, beast. Just an I absolute very beast. Tired I love it. <laughs> all my training, I kind of like trained to peak for the corporate challenge. It was like a big goal of mine. Um, I've run it, oh my gosh, for many years for all different companies. Um, and I've always placed, at least in the top, I think two years I placed third female. And I always had the goal of winning. Um, but I knew that I had to really step it up because uh, girls are fast in Buffalo, <laughs> very, very fast. So it was my goal to win it. And then in 2018, and then when 2019 came around, I got really nervous. So I was like sick to my stomach thinking about trying to defend my title. And a Buffalo news reporter reached out to me to interview me. And he's like, so do you think you can win a second time? You have a target on your back now. And I said, yes, <laughs> I think I can. Um, and I did. And a funny thing that the article from my 2019 victory pointed out was my husband paced me the whole time and he finished one second ahead of me and they made sure to point out that my husband beat me. Oh, come on. on. (laughs) Well, you know, sometimes winning that second race is harder than the first because there was no target on your back for that first one. You know, there's a lot of really good competitors and once you do win it, you know, now it's you're the goal of a lot of you know girls out there or guys too i mean you're you're super fast regardless of if you're a boy or a girl uh, by the way side note you're my first girl on the show so congratulations i was really excited uh yeah yeah breaking Thanks. barriers baby i love it <laughs> awesome so you done Very- so you did the the corporate challenge you've won that twice um mm-hmm. what's your favorite i want to it this year i was i, I would have won it this year i'm positive 100 percent. it's so frustrating with all this going on, especially I think as you know, it, endurance sports are a little bit different in the sense that like, if you're a football player, you have seasons, you know what I mean? Like you're in football shape, you're in hockey shape, you're in whatever sport you're playing. But when you, you, you alluded to it just a second ago, you train to peak, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like kind of a roller coaster in training, you know, and you're really training for a specific day as opposed to, you know, a, yeah. a period of time. So this obviously, you know, this whole situation sucks for everybody. Um, but with endurance sports, it's like, there's nothing to train for right now. You know, there's nothing around the corner. So um, how are you handling that? As For someone who competes at such a high level like you, yeah. are, how are you keeping up with your training and what's kind of the, yeah. uh, the regimen that you're following right now? 
That's a great question. And I kind of have a hot take on that. I <laughs> love not having races. I absolutely love it. So <laughs> I'm someone who like gets really worked up for races. I get really nervous. And I've been like that since I was little, like just, I always get nervous for competition. And, um, I always had like kind of fantasized of a year where I could just train and get stronger rather than having to um, compromise a plan with the race. Um, so it's kind of been good for me to not have any races granted like I do miss racing just because you know now I'm in shape and ready to go mm -hmm. but this is the first time I followed a consistent plan like about 90 percent and I can never follow plan 100 percent there's always life that happens but um I've actually been able to follow a plan and do like time trials like by myself just to set goals and I've I've hit times I've never hit before because I've had an uninterrupted training plan. That's, so that's amazing. That's kind of my, my like hot take on that. No, and I, honestly, I understand where you're coming from on that too, because you know, from my perspective, I in this time without races and stuff, I mean, I've gotten into you know riding my bike on Twitch, you know, and I've like kind of developed yeah. this like whole world, like virtually, that I've met people from around the world, and you know, it's I would have never been doing this kind of stuff if. You know, races were still going on, you know, so I think this has yeah. been kind of a mental break to kind of explore, you know, what it is like not having races and not getting out. I'm the same way like you, Kim. I get all freaking jacked up for races. I listen to all these like motivational videos the day of the race and I'm like on the verge of tears before I'm about to run. And, you know, my fiance is like, you are an absolute lunatic. And I'm like, well, you know, yeah. if you're not getting nervous, you're not living. That's the way I see it. Oh, I call so it my alter ego. I have a racing ego where like, I'm actually not super friendly the day of a race because I'm just like focused and I just want to be like done. So it's like my alter ego race, Kim. And then like my post race <laughs> alter ego is like so much more relaxed, but like my alter ego race, Kim basically is like tough and not friendly. And just some people have literally said, Kim, I thought you were mad at me and it's not personal. <laughs> it's just that. what I have to do. Just I, the tiger, you know, you're competitive and you want to win and you're not going to let anything stop you. So what's wrong with that? You know, I love that. I'm, I'm the same way. I get all, I get all jacked. Uh, definitely. So yeah, you're right. It is nice to have this, this little break, you know, and, um, I personally, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think there was kind of one of two ways to go. I don't think a lot of people, I, I don't think anyone's like training as usual. You know, I think people either went one way with it where they're going, you know, hey, I, I'm going to take this break to, to just kind of fully recharge. I'm not going to train hard. I'm just going to kind of I feel like running or swimming or biking or whatever. I'm just going to go out and do that. And then I think there's some people who, you know, kind of like me and you that are like, you know what, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to use this opportunity to, you know, see what I'm capable of without having races in the way, without having to deal with, you know, these like peaks and valleys and, and see what I can do. And um, I think once racing starts to really get back, I think it'll come out in the wash. I think a lot of these people, you know, because training is, you know, something that it, it, it's not easy to just jump back into, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, if you're missing an entire season, I think there's going to be a pretty big disparity, I think, between some of these athletes. I don't know, what do you think about that? That's, I, I think about this a lot. That's a, I, I actually really agree with you, like 100%. Um, I definitely have, well, I was so wishy-washy last year. I'm like, I want to be done competing. I'm done with it too. And like, on the other hand, I'm like, I just want to go all in. Just all in. <laughs> it's and like the, so, uh, the ego and the id or whatever that is, you know, you're yeah. getting cold. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of when I realized I didn't have to, to commute as much to work, um, I didn't have to get up as early. I was able to get more miles in before work. I'm just like, well, I might as well take this opportunity to like go after it mm -hmm. and just see what I can do. But definitely when racing starts again, um, I think that the people who rested, I, I think they might be fine just because their bodies are healed and, you know, they might've been doing other things besides, you know, you know, how you are triathletes, you, you bike and you swim and you run. I'm a runner. Like I don't really bike and swim, <laughs> but like a lot of people are cross training right now, like biking and lifting more. So they might come back strong as well. So it just depends how you spend your time. It'll be interesting because this is, I mean, obviously we're not old. I mean, I'm older than you and I can't remember a time that everything had just shut down completely for, you know, basically an entire season. So I know it's yeah. cliche to say, you know, we're in unprecedented times, but we, I mean, it really is a weird time to, 
It, it'll be interesting to see because you may see new schools of thought come out of this too. I, you never know. You know, yeah. it, they may be like, hey, why don't you cycle racing seasons too? I don't know. It, it's because uh, especially with endurance sports, I mean, you could run forever, and a lot of you know endurance athletes peak in their you know 30s. You know, so if you know you got that much time to to kind of play with, and if you're really serious about someone like you competing at really high levels and trying to win you know really big races like you do. Um, you may, I don't know. I'm just kind of talking out of my ass, but uh, you never know. It, it may be changed forever. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out. No, I definitely think that moving forward, people are going to be more considerate of like personal space and like what they're touching and like how many people are in the area together. And mm -hmm. it's definitely more things are going to come to light that we probably never thought of before. Yeah. Uh, I'm on a running club called Checkers and we have a cross country team and we don't think Obviously, we're going to have a cross country season, even though it's not many people who race at one time. But even things like that, just like, and I think about a lot of my friends are coaches at high schools and colleges, and they might not even have a season, which makes it hard to recruit, um, which is a big part of colleges getting athletes and students is recruiting for sports. That's interesting. See, so that, I never thought about that aspect of it, but you're right. Yeah, and that's going to have a lot of residual effects too. You know, you're just trying to recruit basically virtually now, right? Is that what they're going to be going? Yeah. Well, there's no races to go to. I, I coached college for um, like a year and you have to go out to races physically and like talk to people and talk to kids and you have to be there. <laughs> and then, but there's no races going on. It's kind of hard to look at people's times from two years ago or a year ago. And hopefully they're still in the same shape. Right, right. Yeah, that's uh, especially kids that age. It's very easy to get distracted, you know, college age years. Um, so I did want to bring up, so with with these podcasts and with these shows, when I talk to athletes, um, you know, I, I, when I reach out to them, and a lot of the athletes that I've interviewed so far, I don't really know. Like, I know you, but some other people, like the inline speed skater guy, I met him just through Twitch. You know, he was just like, he hopped on my stream and he was like, I, I started inline speed skating at 40 years old. And I'm like, what? I got to talk to you. And then he started telling me about it. I'm like, no, 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 no. I want to know nothing about you. I want to learn about this, like on the show, like genuinely. So with you, when I texted you or, or messaged you, you go, you started telling me about like your, your PK or your PR <laughs> that you just did. I go, nope, don't want to hear it. Don't want to talk about it. Um, so now let's talk about it. So <laughs> when you said you did a 5k PR, uh, what were you at? And, uh, yeah, I'd love to you know hear about that. Cause you said the time and, uh, my jaw dropped, my jaw hit the floor. <laughs> sure. So, um, I kind of, so when I met my husband, Zach, um, we met through a running club in Buffalo. So Shout out to Zach. Of, course, of course. And, um, he really helped me to kind of realize just because our lifestyles are very similar running competitively is important to both of us is very rare our lifestyle is weird to like normal people but <laughs> he gave me a lot of insight into like weaknesses I had like I wasn't running enough mileage and even just for 5k training um I wasn't running enough mileage and I wasn't doing enough feed work and hills so he kind of gave me a lot of insight and he started coaching me within the, about in the last year so I have to like preface with that because that's led to a lot of my success so I've been kind of like training myself on and off with some coaches, not very consistent. Like, like for the Buffalo run of the year, I tried to be good at every distance, like mile to half marathon, and it's just not doable. So that's I specificity, picked, right? Like that's yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I picked the mile and the 5k and like, that is all I'm training for, for a few years. That is it. And so I actually have the book here. I bought this book oh, nice. and my husband um, picked the plan that I should follow in here. It's a 5k plan based on 50 plus miles a week running so oh, that's a lot of miles uh, for a 5k well i peak at 70 so um and then my down weeks probably like high 50s um so i follow this plan i did 12 weeks out so i started this at the beginning of quarantine and at the end of 12 weeks you're supposed to do your like a 5k time trial and that was at the middle of june so i just picked a day i was absolutely completely by myself I actually started to do it and my watch died. So I had to go back home and charge my watch oh my and then God. restart my time trial because I'm smart. And especially <laughs> with you being like without any races or anything like that and as competitive as you are, I bet you got yourself all worked up like in the zone. You're like, today is my time trial. 
let's yeah, do this and then oh that's got to be so painful I can't it was terrible. <laughs> so the plan basically has you start training at your current 5k pace and then as the weeks progress you start to do your workouts at your goal 5k pace and my goal 5k pace at that time was 535 and I by myself no one there only me and my watch I did three laps of my neighborhood I did a 5k in 1701 that is ridiculous so, and what I, is that per mile? What is that average out there? Just under 535 pace. That is insane. It is so fast. I never thought I could do that. Um, it took me a long time to break 18. And then I never thought I could break 17. Um, so that was amazing. And I thought it was kind of a fluke. I'm like, something must have been wrong. Was my watch wrong? Too good to be true. <laughs> so two weeks later, I did another 5K with my running club just at like maybe like five of us and i ran 17 20 and i didn't feel that good doing it but it was a really hot day but that kind of made me realize like okay it wasn't a fluke i can run like mid to low 17s consistently and i'll think about when you add in you know an actual race where you got you know the you got your laser laser sharp focus you know you're prepared for it i was going to ask you yeah. so you when you chose the uh the the 12 mile plan that you did through the book um was it be was it with the corporate challenge in mind because in the yeah. isn't the corporate challenge around you know mid uh, yeah. when it yeah I, okay <laughs> you nailed it <laughs> <laughs> i did my time trial the weekend after the corporate challenge would have been gotcha 100%. gotcha yeah. so you were yeah you were primed and ready to go so did you 12 weeks what that's four four months no three months um, so when you picked yeah. the plan, was there in the back of your mind? Well, no, what, that would have been, so this was like, and you started training for it, like right when all this went down, huh? Exactly. Oh, yeah. that sucks. Cause I was, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I was, a- um, I work for, uh, the major league soccer team down here. And I remember being at the game, we had a game March 7th. And then I remember that Wednesday, the NBA went down. Like mm-hmm. they were the first ones to go down. And then as soon as we saw that, we were like, oh no. <laughs> and then cause at that point, it didn't seem like, I don't know. It just, it seemed surreal. It seemed like it was going to be like, no way August 10th we'd be sitting here yeah. still with no end in sight. You know, I, no way was that even going to cross my mind. It's like I, maybe a month, if that, or a couple of weeks. But um, yeah. and so that, so you're like, this is the year I'm going to just, I'm going to go for three. I'm gonna crank it out, you know, I'm gonna get a PR and then it sucks. Wow, I'm sorry to hear that because that's when you put that much effort and see the results, you know, that's that's a frustrating thing. But you know, you can do it. So look at the bright side, right? Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm just kind of doing this for myself. I mm-hmm. don't need like validation from other people to like make me feel good about my accomplishment. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of did it for myself and my own like mental confidence. Um, I also did a mile time trial on Saturday. So I've also been in the middle of this like kind of training for a mile Mm -hmm. and my goal is to break five minutes and I ran 501 on Saturday, just Uh, this past Saturday. So crazy. Nice job. Uh, (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I also did that with my, my club. It's a lot easier to do it with people, especially a mile. It's really Mm -hmm. hard to go all out for a mile by yourself. Yeah. That's where I, Whenever I'm following a training plan, I think that's where I struggle the most is when you have to do like a a time trial test, you know, to gauge. Um, Same concept that you're talking about with a bike. Um, With the Mm -hmm. bike, when you do an FTP test, it's like a, usually it's like 40 minutes at, you're trying to find, like it's all based on wattage instead of speed. So you're trying to find the output that you can sustain for 40 minutes at the highest possible output. So you're not like crashing. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. for me to just do it on my bike in my room, it's like, I can't, you know what I mean? It's hard to dig deep when you're not racing someone or when you're not, um, you know, in the thick of it. So I, I always struggle with that yeah. kind of stuff. So I was going to ask you with, um, so let's kind of, kind of, I'd like to shift. We're talking about your training, what it's been like, you know, the past 12 year, 12 weeks for you. Um, how about leading up to, you know, kind of where you are as a runner, you know, overall, um, did you run in college? Did you run, I know you, you did, I mean, you, you were in college or you competed in college and you're from Lakeview, right? Like, like, oh yes. I went to Lakeshore high school. Lakeshore. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so let's start there. Let's start, you know, high school. Did you play any other sports or did you even run in high school? Or yeah. let's hear about what made Kim, let's, let's hear about Kim Vona before she was Tomasic. Sure. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, so um, my family's just athletic in general, they're, but no one runs. They're all golfers, baseball, basketball, all things I'm not good at. I'm not good at things that require objects. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to play softball and they threw me in left field till I could just chase the balls. <laughs> I could get on base if I hit it. Like I wasn't good at anything else to be completely honest. You got but the speed, like, you know, so that works out. For elementary okay. school and like the pacer run when you would like go from like there's yep. a beep and had to get to the other side. I remember that. I beat, I beat the last one. I beat out all the boys. So I always knew I could run. And then I did a uh, modified track. I bu bumped up to like JV and varsity early. Um, but I ran in high school and I was like good relatively, uh, but I wasn't serious about it. Like a bunch of us for cross country in high school, we'd run to my house and like sit there and then run back and say we did our, like five miles and we didn't. <laughs> like I just really wasn't into it. I hope your um, coach isn't listening right now. Yeah, I, he probably knew. <laughs> <laughs> We could, I could have been so much better in high school. Um, but like granted, like I saw, I saw to States in high school for the 3000 meters and for cross country twice. Um, and one of my best friends, Mikkel, uh, she actually ended up running for the, my rival college, <laughs> uh, me and her together in, in a high school, um, for like the duo who we pushed each other, but we definitely were lax with it. Um, mm. which I think might've been a good thing because I didn't burn out for college then. So I didn't even want to run in college. I was kind of over it. It was kind of, it's very stressful doing, I did indoor, outdoor and cross country. So it was every season I had something that was, you know, very cardio based. It's a lot. It's a lot. And yeah, it's, it's, it's lot the, the kind of the ancillary effects of that too. You know, it's, it's this early Saturday morning workouts. It's Friday night, all your friends are going out and you got to stay in. It's like a lot of that stuff too, as a kid, you know, that you Sacrifice. Like, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. My high school prom, uh, the, the, day, the day of prom, I had sectionals. Um, and then I went to prom. Then I had to go back to sectionals the next day to run the 4 by 800 meter relay. Wow. Um, that's, a, that's, so that's some dedication right there. That's impressive. This is what we did. Yeah. Um, then I ran. Um, I got a scholarship for cross country to Niagara University at their Division One in the MAC conference, the MAAC. And you? And for believers. There, yeah, for <laughs> believers. And there, um, I was a top girl for all four years, and I broke the 6K record, I think, my junior year. Wow. So, yeah, I still have that. I checked. Last Congrats. Time I That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. So, that was really, And it's cross country. Cross country is so much harder than road racing. Oh, it's yeah. so hard. Um, so, I ran for four years. I had a different coach every year. And granted, every coach was unique and very good. Just not having consistent coaching, I kind of plateaued. Well, when I was a senior, I was very burned out. And during my master's degree year, um, I didn't really race or run that much um, just because I was, I needed a break. Um, and then the year after my master's, I met Zach and kind of got reinvigorated with running again um, after, you know, years of competitiveness, being mm -hmm. nervous for races, having that high and low running is so heartbreaking. You'll have an amazing race and have a terrible race. And I was just kind of over it. And when I met Zach, he um, kind of reinvigorated me. He was my running partner. I trained by myself for years. I still train by myself like 80% of the time, but it was just a nice um, change. Mm -hmm. So he got me running, honestly, just like more mileage. And then my time started to drop and I got like motivated. You know how you have like a really good workout and you have a good race and get motivated again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you start asking, what if, yeah. what if, what if, uh, yeah. you know? I can get better. I'm still getting better. So let's go. I, I, I get that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So post um, high school and college, I'm way faster now, like so much faster now. And I think it's, it's not somewhat to do with probably less stress and somewhat to do with I'm doing it because I want to, not because I signed a contract and have to do it. Um, but yeah. And I, I met some of my best friends through cross country and running. Um, my two best friends, Ellie and Beth, shout out. Okay. Um, I, I met through running post-college and, um, so yeah, I think it's sports are like a great way to meet people and, um, the running community, as you mentioned earlier, it's like a, not a cult, but it's very niche and we're like in our own world <laughs> when yeah. we're together, we think everyone else thinks what we do is normal, but it's not. 
And it's just kind of funny. And that's the thing. I honestly, what drew me, um, I mean, you know my story, and, you know, I've said it a million times, so I know it's obnoxious, but, you know, that, but you alluded to it, you know, that sense of, you know, that feeling that you get on race day or before competition or before even just like a really hard workout with friends, I don't think a lot of people, I, I think, not, maybe not a lot, I think too little people experience that. You know, I think there's too many people that, you know, are craving that. They want to feel, because they did it in high school or maybe college, and they don't even know the opportunities that exist outside of, you know, after college. Because I was talking to um, a guy I interviewed, Naquan Chia. He was in the Olympics twice, and at the age of 25, he's just like, same thing with you, Kim. He got, he got burned out. You know, he's like, I just... I just fell out of love with the sport. Well, he gained 60 pounds. He wound up, you know, falling into this like pretty deep depression. And when he was like 31, he was like almost suicidal. And he's talking to his doctor. And his doctor's like, I got to put you on all these meds. And he's like, I'm definitely not doing that. And then, you know, he, he it was kind of like a wake up call for him to, well, it was a wake up call to be like, you know, I, I can't continue to live like this. Because he went through a divorce too and he had a kid. And um, I guess what I'm getting at though is like what you were mentioning that sense of community. It's not only about the sport. I mean, you don't, you don't even have to be, it's anyone. Running is just one of the most simplest. You need a pair of shoes, that's it. And you just walk out your front door and just start running around. Even if it's a mile, just do it. You know, it's, it makes you feel so much better. And you meet so many cool people in the community at the different races. And like you said, you, you know, a couple of your best friends that you met through the sport. And I, I just think the opportunity exists uh, especially in running, there's no barrier to entry. You know, it's you just go online, you find a race, and you know, you pay twenty bucks. Oh, boom, you're at a five k. You know, and, and then you go down the rabbit hole. I think that's when you really start to experience that. Oh, there's more of these. These people are cool. You know, and um, I yeah. don't know. What do you think about that? Because that, that's the way I saw the community when I was opened up. When I kind of was, yeah. you know, that that corporate channels. I was just like, whoa, these people are pretty cool. This is fun. <laughs> I, I have a couple opinions. So first off, I will say there's one year I did like 40 races in a year. I'm not kidding you. I did 40 <laughs> races in a year. And I, I, that's the year I burned out like hard. Yeah. I think that might've been the year I did Buffalo around the year just because I was just doing so many races because you get kind of egged on by people like just show up. And like, there's a lot of 5Ks I could just not really try, but win. Mm -hmm. And that feeling of winning is like addicting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just burned out so hard. Honestly, I think I was burned out for the past three years, honestly, yeah. from yeah. this time. This is so, a good reset this year. Yeah. So there's sometimes, I, I will say this, like racing is a great way to like be social and like meet people. But if you have goals, and you want to specifically train for a race, or you specifically want to train for a time, you have to control, you have to have some self-control. You have to follow a plan and you have to stick to the plan and you can't throw in a race that's not meant to be there. Um, as tempting like, as it may be. <laughs> yeah, like so many people ask me for running advice and I'm like, oh, like what plan are you following? And, or they'll be upset after they do a 5K and their time was bad. And I say, well, what did you do to prepare for this? They're like, oh, I did a race last weekend. I did a race yesterday and there's, there's no plan. So that's just where I'm very like, I don't, like people who don't, who just want to race to have fun. I do whatever you want. I don't care. But if you're going to ask me for advice on like how to get a time, I'm going to tell you to stop racing so much mm -hmm. <laughs> and just have a plan. That was a hard thing for me to understand when I started really understanding, you know, the, the idea and theories behind training and getting better, like the, the kind of sometimes the less is more concept or the slow down to speed up kind of thing. Like yeah. I was for a while, I, every time I train or go out and run, I mean, I was just kind of haphazardly just running around and I was going as hard as I could every day. And I experienced that burnout and that sucks. It's frustrating because you think in your mind, you're putting in all this training but it's just, you're just throwing darts at a wall blindfolded. You know, there's really no rhyme or reason to what you're doing and following. I did that for so long. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. It, it seems like. I, I thought I knew what I was doing. That's exactly, <laughs> exactly. You think you're like, man, if I just go really hard every day and I'm just going to get better. And that's just not, not how it works. 
know, and it, you got to be yeah. like that. So could you do me a favor? Can you hold that book up again? Because um, if you're oh, following yeah. this book, I think it might be backwards for you, but it's road uh, racing for serious runners. That was the right way. It looks good. It looks at road okay. racing for serious runners. Uh, where did you get it? I got it on Amazon for super cheap and it's by um, Pete Fitzinger. And um, they have a bunch of plans, I think, for like a 5K to marathon. Okay. Um, I don't do marathon, but um, 5K and 8 and 10K, I, I would look into this for. Um, my 5K plan is on this bookmark page, like over here, uh, right here. And <laughs> basically, I, I try to follow that almost too much of a T as possible. Like, like I said, life happens. Sometimes it's too humid out. I'll like switch up a workout a little bit, but still try to get the benefit. Um, but yeah, this is, this has really helped me a lot. Um, I will also say, Brian, you nailed it where you can't go hard every day. And this is my advice. Like it's so funny. People ask me for advice all the time, but they don't listen to me. So <laughs> this is like my time to like say my advice. <laughs> get out of your soapbox, girl. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so like the the, if you're like doing like a weekly plan, like a weekly formula to train is literally one long run, which is about, I mean, everyone's got their own opinion, but I think it's about like maybe 10 to 20% depending. Kim, hold on, hold on, head. hold on. Everyone grab a pen and paper right now and write this down because you are listening to a guru right now. Okay. I'm not a guru. This is from my <laughs> experience and from like reading a lot of things. <laughs> um, long, like one long run that's longer than your base run um go for mileage or time whatever you're used to um one day a week is speed work now by speed work i mean like mile pace like sprints like 100s and 200s one day a week and then your second workout out of the, out of the week you're going to alternate between lactate threshold and vo2 max so lactate threshold is not like a comfortable pace it's like hard comfortable it's about your half marathon pace so if I'm training for like a 535K, I'm going to say my half marathon pace is about 610, 615 maybe, maybe. So that's my lactate threshold pace. I'll do like a four mile, three mile lactate threshold run or a VO2 max workout, which is more to my 3K, 5K pace. So I'll do like 1000 meter repeats at 530 to 525. So one day a week sprints, one day a week VO2 max or lactate threshold, one long run, the rest, easy, 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 easy one day off if you need it. Otherwise you're running like a minute to a minute and a half slower than you would normally. <laughs> a lot of it is like, um, I was talking to, I don't know if you saw, I talked to um, a gentleman who's an elite stair runner and- I saw that, I'm obsessed. It's crazy, <laughs> right? I thought that was the coolest thing. I, I, when I stumbled on his profile, I'm like, wait a minute, this is a thing, I gotta talk to this guy. I mean, I've, I've been following him for years, but anyways, you know, one of the things that he was talking about was, um, you know, even though his races are only, you know, like a long race for him, he ran up the Empire State Building in 13 minutes, which is That's insane, insane, right? Um, but what he was saying is he does a lot of low, monotonous running as well to build that base. It's like the foundation of the pyramid, you know, it's like you can do all that sprint work that you want, but without that foundation, that's not going to get you anywhere. You know, it's like building a house. I think the analogy he used was building a house on sand. You know what I mean? You need a hard foundation of concrete before you can build a house. Otherwise, that house is just going to collapse in on itself if you're just doing speed work all the time. So, um, yeah, I can't concept. even concept. emphasize that enough. Um, yeah. So, like I was saying, like m my husband really helped me. I used to go hard every day because of like Strava and social media. There's a lot you of pressure. There's hard. definitely a lot of pressure There's when you so see. Much pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I just want to be like, well, they can't know I run slow. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I care why anyone thought, but Zach and I will run like, honestly, nine minute pace, eight minute and 30 second pace, just easy mileage. And I do a lot of double runs like morning, evening, okay. just to get more mileage in on my peak weeks, like the 70 mile weeks. Um, but yeah, so and I'm also, I also have not been injured in probably like five years. Oh my God. Knock on, what, what are you doing saying that out loud? Come on now. <laughs> no aches, no pain. I just like stretch and roll out like consistently and I recover well. I got to get better at that. I suck at stretching. Recovering. That, that's a problem. Like knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> but 
So the um, that's that's the thing that that's the challenge I run into um, quite literally running into in Texas is for some reason it's hotter here at like 5 p.m. than like noon. Oh so gosh. like right now it's 100 degrees. Um, yesterday I did yesterday. So this is something that I have kind of enjoyed in this off season too. You know, quote unquote off season that yeah. no races or anything. Sometimes I will just go. You know what? I'm gonna do something crazy today. And I'll just go up because I, I'm following, like generally following a plan, but the same thing with you. It's like, if I want to deviate, I can, because I'm not, I don't have any huge races coming up. There's nothing, exactly. you know, so if I want to do something crazy, I just adjust my schedule. So yesterday it was noon and I'm like, it was 95 degrees. And I'm like, I'm gonna see if I can do a half marathon. I'm like, I'm not going to go fast. I'm just going to go. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. I was like, I did, I did eight. It was like a seven fifty. It was an eight, mi- eight minute mile pace, you know, nothing fast, but um, my God, it was hot. But if if I you know did like something like you're talking about doing the you know morning and night, if I'm going out at five, like if I went out right now at six thirty, it's a hundred degrees right now, and I oh you gosh. know it's like dangerous to be doing sprints, you know. So oh, my yeah, question I is, um, sure. do you ever consider? Um, I know there's a very polarizing uh, topic of conversation with runners. Do you ever use a treadmill in any of your training? I love treadmills. <laughs> okay. See, I do too. I love treadmills, I but do. you know, um, some people are like, ah, screw treadmills. I never do it. That's not running. Blah, blah, blah. So uh, I yeah. had to ask oh. you. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I love treadmills. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, there's nothing I like hate. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything. I have a spin bike in my basement too. Um, just cause obviously like, you know, you should take my, take, take my spin classes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I love spinning. And I love treadmills. I think treadmills are a great way to like safely get mileage in. You can do workouts on them. Um, I I do think treadmills are boring. Like my husband's like an ultra runner. So he's used to doing boring things for a very long time. And for people listening <laughs> I, who don't know what an ultra run is. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fill, that, fill, fill people in on what an ultra runner means. Um, it's um, a race that's over a marathon. So my husband has done 50 Ks, which is like 31 miles and some change. And then like. 50 miles and then I have runners in my running club who are amazing who do like 100 mile races like it's crazy but it's a thing mm, and insane. it's just a different kind of athlete I don't do that I do five games you ever seen uh but, I know Jeff Adams I don't know if you know Jeff Adams yeah, yeah he's a he's I a was big actually athlete. referencing him I was referencing him <laughs> there you go see there you go we said it without saying it what's up Jeff I know no, he's not listening. He's but absolutely incredible. <laughs> and his girlfriend, Mora, is amazing too. She's, they're great. I just saw them on Saturday. <laughs> That's so cool. See the Buffalo running community, the strikes again is so small. Everyone knows each other. Yeah. Um, yeah no, definitely. Have you ever run into, uh, do you know who Patrick Cutter is? Have you, have you seen him? Mm-mm. He's, he's a good follow. He's going to be on the show. Um, we're actually setting up a day within the next week or two. Um, so there's a couple, like, my inspiration I drew from running people like, like you and Patrick are like two of the runners that stick out in my mind is when I was getting started and running as inspiration, this Patrick Cutter guy, he's like this, he's pretty jacked. Like he doesn't look like a runner at all. He looks like he could strap it on and go play in the NFL right now. And wow. he runs like 240 marathons. So that's really good. Yeah. He's a beast. Really he's an absolute beast. And uh, for a while he was working for Wegmans like overnights. And um, what he was doing was um, just work, you know, he'd work overnight and run. It's basically all he was doing. And kind of the run slow to get faster thing is really something he harps on. Because when you said it's you know, kind of like a prideful thing when, you know, you don't, you don't want to put your runs on Strava and be like, oh, my God, everyone's going to know I'm running slow. I don't, you know, it, and it's, it's such a dumb way to think. But it's true. You know, you think that way sometimes. But when I was seeing him post, you know, I'm running 8, 830 miles today and he's running a 240 marathon. You know, it's, you draw inspiration from people like that that are smart about it, you know, that have careers that are, you know, not professional, but you know what I'm seeing. Like, you see people who yeah. are doing it the right way, you know, that are smart. So that that's kind of leads me to my yeah. next question is, you know, with – you kind of mentioned before um, you're doing, you know, kind of sometimes you're doing two days during your peak weeks and you're getting able to do longer runs in before work. Um, what do you do for a living? Yeah. So um, I work for full time. I work for a tech startup in Buffalo that was founded by um, a graduate of Niagara University. So we, we design, uh, we're a design led engineering firm 
where I'm on the design team, I'll design screens for apps and websites, and we have a development team that codes them for large companies. So I do that full time. And then I also have my own like freelancing company where I consult small businesses on Facebook ads and Facebook marketing. Um, so I do that. I have a full time job that I have like my freelancing gig. And then I train. <laughs> that's honestly all I do. I am very lucky that I have a husband. That's all you do. Like that's nothing. Also does that. <laughs> or else this would not be realistic. Um, but like, it's a life, 100% a lifestyle. Yep. Um, well, and that's what I, but you know, that's kind of what I wanted. I would, sure I could have a podcast or a show where I talk to professional athletes and then you hear people, you know, well, of course they can do it because that's all they do. Well, that's why like I'm kind of, this niche is what I'm trying to fill is I'm trying to serve as an inspiration to show what people are capable of at the highest levels of their amateur sports while still having to, you know, keep the lights on food in the fridge, that kind of stuff, you know? So it's possible if you have basically two jobs and you're yeah. able to accomplish what you're doing, I mean, what's stopping someone from, you know, working a day and then saying they don't have time. Well, nothing, nothing. How long does, a mile take to run even if you walk it 20 minutes 25 minutes you're telling me you don't have time you know I, mm -hmm. I always used to when I I used to um, I was a trainer at Planet Fitness and I always used to tell people um, they would say time's an issue time's an issue and I'd say no problem I definitely and when, when they said that I wouldn't make it obvious I'd you know kind of keep that idea in the back of my head and then later in the later in the conversation I'd always say so what's your favorite TV show and Right off the bat, they'd say something. I go, so you have time. You're just choosing yeah. to watch TV. But you, do, you have the time. Like, you, you could just wake up a half hour earlier. Boom, you're good. Or, you know, just record the show and watch it when you're going to bed. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you make time for what you need to make time for. And for good me, point. for me, I always, you know, I, I hearken back to when I got the bug. And I just, I think there's so many competitive people out there that, want to compete and may not even know that communities like this exist or they have these opportunities to to channel their competitive you know the competitiveness within them and get it out and i mean in buffalo like i said but i'm sure like many places all over the country i mean there's races dallas is huge you know there's there's stuff going on all the time here and i think you just like in Buffalo, it's buffalorunners.com. That's like the central location to find, you know, a race. But do you know of any, like, are there any national, like, racing organizations that off the top of your head you could suggest or anything like that where people could use that as a resource to kind of get started? Sure. So the USTAF definitely is a resource to, like, find races. Um, I'm part of the USTAF Niagara um, as a part of my running club's cross-country team. So through that, there's like series of races that are like unique that aren't, wouldn't be on buffalorunners.com. So you can find like your, your like USATF branch or like, I know there's like triathlon branches. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not as familiar with that, but like you can find like your local branch of something. And then like through that, you can find different competitive races or like competitions. So if you could do me a favor, shoot me that link when we're, when we're done here. And then um, I'll post it in the show notes. So regardless of where you are in the United States, there's something near you. That's, uh, that's a guarantee. Yeah. There's always going to be something. Well, not right now, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, even like there's just like, a, I can't think of them off, off the top of my head right now, but me and my husband went to Washington State last October to visit a family friend. And we just look like everywhere we go, we just like races near us. I do <laughs> the same like, thing. <laughs> there's a bunch of like ra racing websites that just list everything local. And we ran a local 5K and 10K, and we both won. <laughs> That's amazing. Who are these jerks from Buffalo coming into our town and taking over? <laughs> I did that when I went to New Mexico too. I broke like, like a like a streak of this girl winning this trail race in New Mexico. That's I'm amazing. From Buffalo. <laughs> that is absolutely. I love that. I went to um, I went to, and I'm not obviously as fast as you. When I went to Pittsburgh though, when I was playing semi pro football, we had a game that Saturday night, and then I ran a trail race that Sunday morning. My fiance is like, you gotta stop, like relax. I'm like, I can't, I don't know how to. <laughs> oh, it's just ingrained in us. You um, would have loved, there is, um, so I work for FC Dallas, the major league soccer team down here. And um, what was really cool and uh, they do for the, so the Dallas Marathon, because it's so hot here, um, it's in December. <clears throat> so what, 
we do is they have um, we compete all the all the professional sports teams race each other at the Dallas Marathon, and what they do is they have this was 2018 that I did it. Um, Hoka was a sponsor, and they what they do is they provide runners for the it's a I think it's a five five legs so you get it's a four person team and then wow. that Hoka runner is the fifth person and. They basically run like the first mile or two together and then they hand the baton off to the athletes from the different sports organizations. So, you know, me being competitive and, you know, a runner, I kind of put the team together for FC Dallas and um, it was so cool because you get the VIP at the event at the, at the Dallas Marathon. So you get two guest passes and it's unlimited booze and food in the tent before and after the race. And, um, it was cool because we got to race the Cowboys, the Mavericks, uh, the Rangers, and then there was, and the Stars. So it was cool to get bragging rights because, uh, you know, being from Buffalo, we're not the biggest Cowboys fans, and they, D- they DNF'd, so it was great to see that. I was really happy that we got to beat them. The Mavericks, there was a guy who ran a 5'10 average for six miles, and there was That's- just... Yeah, there was just no coming back from that guy. But we came in second place. I, I ran anchor, and I beat the guy from the Rangers So to get second place. So that was pretty cool. You know, it was a cool experience. Wow. But it'd be cool if they did something in Buffalo like that. You know, the Bills, the Bisons, the Sabres. It'd be, it'd be kind of cool. Um, so let me ask you this. What's your favorite brand of shoe that you run in? Oh, you have I one? <laughs> I do. Okay. So um, it's kind of not the most, like, popular brand, but it's called Ultra. A L T R A. Very familiar. The flat so, zero drop, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes, it's zero drop. It's shaped like a foot, kind of like wider feet. So um, I actually did my mile time trial and my ultra tra- ultra trainers <laughs> on Saturday. I love them. I used to race in my ultra, like a really old version of the ultra ones, for years. That's I love the. I um, is it the the Escalante? Yes, I love the Escalante as a yeah, trainer. Those are very Me comfortable. Yeah, so I like ultra and I like Saucony. Um, it's another like wide, you know, uh, toe box, mm-hmm. um, very comfortable. So those are my two go-to brands. The Saucony um, Ride, that's a super, super popular shoe. Yeah. I like the Kinvara. Mm-hmm. That's the lighter one. Yeah. Yep. I like the, the, yeah, the, the lighter trainers. I like very like minimalist shoes, um, to run in. Um, I also, um, I don't hate Nike, but I, this is like a kind of a hot topic and I wasn't <laughs> sure I was going to bring it up, but I do like the Vaporfly. <laughs> okay. I haven't, t- I haven't tried it out. What do you think? Uh, do, do you own a pair? Bit. Yes, I do. Um, my husband got a pair for me. I was very, very against like getting them. I'm like, I don't need the shoe. I don't need it. It's, it's a trend. I don't need it. But then my husband got me a pair and I ran um, a PR and then like in last year, my PR of 2019 was in them they're you just feel what I like about them I will say a lot of people say this too I've had bad races in them and you do have to do the work you can't just throw them on and be like I'm a minute faster now you still have to train hard oh yeah but I I threw them on and it just like everything felt more efficient and then the next day I wasn't as dead I will say that like the recovery after a competition in them is better interesting I didn't feel as trashed yeah, what dr- that drove me nuts when um, I feel, I'm embarrassed. I don't know the name. Who's the guy who was attempting to break the three mile or the three hour oh, marathon? Oh, the three hour marathon. Um, I think it's Kip Chogi. Yes, yeah, yeah, Kip. So when you saw people like, yeah, but you know, he had the shoes. On. Screw yeah. you. Try running a marathon in under three hours. You know what I mean? Try doing it in under four hours. You know? Well, or, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not three hours. Two hours. I'm sorry. He was trying to break. Two yeah. Hours. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's under two hours. So um, the point of that exercise, though, was to make perfect conditions. Yeah, it because they had the pace car, conditions. right? And then they had, yeah. um, but still, like, holy cow. The, I mean, that's, I did, so one of the guys that I had on here, that rollerblader I was telling you about, um, he, I, I think I'm going to get into this. I, they have half and full marathon skating competitions. Wow. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he, um, you know, obviously being from Buffalo, everyone's got roller roller blades, you know. So I talked to the guy, and then the next day I'm like, I'm gonna see what it's like to roller skate a marathon. So I did 26 miles in my roller blades the next day. You did? I did, I did, and wow. I did it in 
two hours and 12 minutes. And I'm like, That's holy amazing. cow, that guy would have beat me just running. Like Kip would have beat me running. Oh yeah. And I'm on, and cause as I'm skating, I'm like, this is incredible that people actually run this fast. That is nuts. <laughs> For 26.2 miles. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that's <laughs> nuts. Because I guess in the roller skating world, because believe me, when you say you're competitive, obviously, you know, I am too. I look up the best times and like some of the guys oh, yeah. that and gals that are up there that are doing it the best, they're around like an hour and a half on roller skates doing the 26 miles. That's um, amazing. And they have some big I races around the world. So I think that's another thing I'm going to start to get into. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah yeah i'm excited about cool. doing that yeah yeah i thought that was pretty neat um but, i will say like i am i like rollerblading i don't know how to stop i don't have stoppers on them like i, I kind of just like funny. hockey stop you know um yeah but yeah stopping is kind of important on roller skates i would say Going downhill yeah. scares me <laughs> yeah <laughs> well not being able to stop yes i would say that is yeah. pretty terrifying <laughs> yes um, um what i was gonna say though going back to like talking about the shoes for people sure. that are listening that, you know, maybe have ran in the past or, you know, want to get into it, shoe technology is, it is just absolutely incredible, you know, what they're able to pinpoint as, as far as like, mm -hmm. you know, your gait and all the technology that goes yeah. into the shoes. So if you are thinking about getting into running, what I would suggest is go to your local, um, running store. go to your local running store and yeah. get fit because, you, you know, there's stability versus neutral. And, you know, there's a whole spectrum of, you know, cushioning, you know, low to high. And, you know, like Kim, you were talking about toe box, you know, comfortability and all that stuff. And, you know, don't go to an outlet. And one of the worst things that you could possibly do is going to an outlet, buying a $40 pair of shoes, running in the wrong kind of shoes, and then you hurt yourself yeah. and you're not getting the right support that you need. You may be in the wrong one. And then just saying, eh, running's not for me. And it's a shame because I've seen that happen and it sucks because you take the step to get, you know, going and then, you know, you put yourself in an impossible situation where you're not going to succeed. But I don't know. How do you feel about that? Would you agree with that? I agree. Um, I live in Orchard Park. So right down the road, I have Runner's Roost. Mm -hmm. And Runner's Roost is just fantastic. Um, it's owned by, it's now owned by the woman who recruited me to, my coach at Niagara, who recruited me to run there. She, her, her family owns it now. Nice. And yeah, and I tell you, the people who work there just can like look at your feet and make recommendations and they let you like try out the shoes. Like granted, you have to try them out and not get them wrecked. Mm. But you know, you can return them if you don't, they don't like them. Um, but Runner's Roost and then the Fleet Feet in Buffalo, um, they do really, really good job. Yep. I actually, um, uh, I was, I worked at Fleet Feet. So shout out to Fleet yeah, Feet. They yeah. actually, uh, just opened one up down the road here in Dallas in, uh, in Plano. So I haven't had a yeah. chance to get over there yet, but, um, yeah, Fleet Feet is what I have experience with, but also runner's roost. I've been there too. And, um, run on is a big one down here in Dallas. Yeah. It's run on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, if you were thinking about getting into it, definitely go get fit for shoes because that really will make. I did, I, you know, and I'm speaking from personal experience when I was getting into running, I, I was wearing crap on my feet too. I didn't really understand the importance of it. And even like I wear arch supports, um, that made a big difference for me as well. Just keeping everything in alignment. So yeah, go get that checked out. It's definitely a really important step to take if, uh, if you're thinking about getting into running for, uh, you know, any period of time. So, um, I agree. yeah, and I, I got no dog in the fight. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, trying to sell you anything. I'm truly just yeah. saying, go, go do that. Go do that. Um, Same here. No, I'm just promoting my local stores because they're great and they've yeah. helped me a lot. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> Both of those, Runner's Roost and Fleet Feet are great. Amazing. Um, I will say too, I also recommend that you replace your shoes or you, you get two pairs of shoes at one time to alternate mileage in. Great um, advice. Yep. Yeah. I have at least three, three, two or three pairs um, that I, I'll run in alternate days like i have a, a workout shoe that i do my workouts in i like it i have an easy run shoe and like a long run shoe like i know that's a little excessive but at least like two shoes you can switch between um and then replace them like i, I i've gotten different mileage out of different shoes like my ultras technically don't tend to last me that long but when my knees start to hurt or something feels off and it's been a while like 
I, I do, I gauge it by like 300 ish miles or so, depending mm -hmm. plus or minus for some people is when you should get a new pair. And a lot of it has to do with your body type too. You know, if like you're, you know, a bigger, taller guy, you know, where you're, you know, there's a lot of force coming down with every step. You're going to need to replace it a little bit more than, you know, someone like you, who's a lot, you know, shorter and lighter, you know, you can get, maybe get a little bit more mileage out of it. Um, I will say it made me so happy when you said that um, <laughs> I inspired you because like I was short and I could run because for so long I like hated myself for like not being tall. Like it took me so long to like accept my body, I guess. Like I know a lot of female runners go through issues with like, you know, they see professional runners and they have 0% body fat. They're tall, they're lanky. I'm, you know, I'm shorter, I have muscle and I'm not lanky. So I have a short torso, I look more compact. So like that made me really happy because, um, you know, uh, even my neighbor next door didn't know I was a good runner. Like, but by good, I mean like within Buffalo. <laughs> no, a, a 17 minute 5k <laughs> and winning a 10,000 person race is good anywhere. So yeah. Thank you. Well, <laughs> yeah. she's like, but she's not yeah. tall. Like, how is Kim a good runner? She's not tall. And I get that comment a lot. And you know, when I started out before I graduated college to go into, or before I graduated high school to go into college, I had really bad eating disorder because I tried to get like skinny to look like those girls and it ended up just being bad and not maintainable. Well, I'll so, tell you, Kim, I'm, I'm, I'm honest. I, I really am telling you the truth that I say that. That's why you and that Patrick Cutter, I mean, the, yeah. both of you were very, because same thing on my end. I mean, you know, people say that, you know, guys don't, don't deal with body issues as much as women. But I mean, for me, yeah. being a short guy, I played football my whole life, you know, and I was playing, I played for the Buffalo Lightning, the pro indoor team there. And yeah. Every friggin' practice or every game I heard, look at this short guy, you know, and it's like, it sucks to hear that kind of stuff. You know, you have tough skin and you deal with it, but at the same time, it it affects you to some degree. And um, when I wanted to get into, you know, when I started thinking about getting into racing and running and triathlon and all that stuff, I'd see these guys and they, you know, are toothpicks and they're, you know, six five, and I'm like, oh my god, I have no shot at ever being good at this. And then. You know, I see you at the local races, and when you say that, you know, 2017, when you burnt yourself out doing 40 races, I mean, I was basically doing the same thing because I was just wanting, I, I saw this world of running, and I'm like, I'm going to do everything all at once, you know, so I saw yeah. you at a lot of these races, and you still were killing it. I know you were burned out, but you were still really good, and I was like, wow, this girl is short and killing it, and then I'd see this Patrick Cutter guy, I'm like, well, this dude's jacked, and he doesn't look like a runner, and I'm like... Maybe there is a shot for me to like be decent at this. And that's, so yeah, I, I definitely am not just uh, blowing smoke. That's a real thing. So thank you. Um, yeah. I think all body types can be like fantastic. Like even in just like the checkers running club, I can't tell you one girl who looks the same and they're all like fantastic. And you know what I think a big thing, and, and this is kind of like to loop it all back around to like we were talking about earlier and really the point of this you know, conversations that I have with these athletes is I think the one common thread is the drive to compete. And, you know, that you can, I think something athletes in general have that I think, you know, people who don't play sports or have ever really pushed themselves have is that ability to dig deep, to go to that dark place. You know, when you're two and a half miles into a 5K and you are just sucking wind and you don't know where, how you, where you're going to find that energy to get that, you know, last half mile out to go to that dark place, find that extra gear and dig deep. And there's such an inherent value to that. At least I think when you finish that race and you know you went to that place and you can be proud of what you accomplished, even if it, your goal was to break a half hour and you did it in 2930, you know, just that mm -hmm. feeling of setting a goal and grinding and pushing yourself to accomplish that. I think that is such a big thing just mentally because it, it bleeds over yeah. to different aspects of life as well. Oh yeah. Um, I always say that like, you can't be afraid to hurt. <laughs> right. I, well, like, I say all the yeah. time, the, uh, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Um, I can always tell the people who, who like when they're upset about like a race and they talk to me about it, I'm like, you're afraid to hurt. You're afraid to go to that place. Like mm -hmm. you gotta, and that's what training is all about. Like, that's why I'm very like, pro plan, pro have a plan. <laughs> if mm -hmm. you have a goal 
and you want to reach a goal, you have to have a plan. You just reverse engineer it. You know, you see, you envision yourself on that podium and then work backwards from there. How am I going to get there? Yep. Yeah. It's like all the workouts I like mentioned, like the sprints and the VO2 and the lactate, they're very uncomfortable. But then when it gets to race time, you're like, I know what this feels like. You know what, too? I think this also, and you're exactly right. I think if you start off the day with a hard track workout or like some hard, you know, lactate uh, threshold workout or something like that, you just feel like some kind of like the beast was released from you and then you could just focus on work the rest of the day. You know, I feel at least that's how I feel. You know, if I have a really hard workout in the morning, I go to work like just calm. I'm like, let's do this. All right. I'm excited. You know, if I don't get that workout in, I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'll giddy yeah. all day. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. I'm very pro like morning workout running. I've been, I've always been like that. I think that it also allows me to, to like be able to like run as much as I do as I get up early, which has taken routine and time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like sometimes after work, I'm sure you get this, like, you just don't want to do it. <laughs> well, you're just, there's, there's, there's physical exhaustion and there's mental exhaustion, you know, exactly. and after a h- tough day at work, it is hard to kind of, oh, now I got to like push myself to the brink mentally again, you know, outside. I, I, uh, but if you get up and you just don't even think about it, you know, your arm goes off, maybe not. Maybe you condition yourself to get up at the same time every day. It's just your eyeballs open yeah. up, it's feet on the ground and we're out the door. You know, you don't have time, but before you even know where you are, you're halfway done with your workout, you know, and I, I love that. And I think there's just something so calming about being outside when it's dark out in the morning. I love that. I absolutely love that. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, yeah, I will say that, uh, I, it's, you have to be like, you have to be motivated for like most, like in order to like be able to get out there, even as before after work, you have to be motivated, but it's also like stress relieving. And, um, I will, like, I totally agree with you when you say you go into work, like, calm <laughs> like I just feel like I, a lot of anxiety is gone it's, it's definitely helped me work through a lot of anxiety I have like just be able to like release some energy that's not going to be on my plate after work um so yeah I definitely encourage anyone who hasn't started a routine of like doing some kind of activity before work I'm always, start a routine. even if you do a, just a half hour like yoga or just yeah, something just, a half hour. just something just just get up and do something and it's going to make your day exponentially better. I really do believe that so the other thing that I was going to say um or I mean ask you so say someone wants to get into running and they've never run before what advice would you offer them what would you say what's the first thing you do sure so um so like I've been running like it's crazy for me to say this but I've been running for over 20 years you to think about right <laughs> like competitively um I started when I was like probably like six and now I'm like 28. <laughs> so, over 20 years. Um, so what I would say if someone, and I will say this, I've met a lot of people through the local running scene in Buffalo who started running at 40 or like 50. It's amazing. And they're amazing. I, I think that. they're, I just think I love them so much. They're so incredible. Um, I'll, I'll just say like, don't like, well, I'm running on pro plan. Definitely don't just go out and like do five miles and like hurt yourself. I'd say, I always, um, I always suggest to go for time instead of mileage. So start out like with a 20 minute run jog, then, you know, run, run for like how, how how long you can then walk, run, walk until you get to 20 minutes and then like increase maybe like five to 10% from there. Um, Definitely run, walk, definitely have the proper foot gear, Um, make, you know, make things digestible. Cause I know a lot of people get on trends, like, like they're like, I'm on a running kick this week. And then they go too much and then it's unsustainable Mm -hmm. and they burn out. It's a good point. It's a very good point. Sustainable, digestible, small goals that won't hurt you. I think another thing I might add on to that too, is running. Like you mentioned, you're kind of, you know, most of your workouts are alone. Um, I be, I'm a lone wolf. I'm like exclusively train alone. I mean, minus, you know, me broadcasting my rides on Twitch every morning. But aside from that, I'm alone. <laughs> um, but I think me and you are kind of maybe an outlier. I think a lot of the running community is very, very social and running clubs. Oh, get, a, get a partner. Yeah. Get a partner. Yeah, get a partner. And it's it helps. hard now. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. You don't want to run on the mask on. That's, it sucks. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah. yeah, I've been running with these two guys 
at like we before Corona, um, the quarantine, we would meet each other at the local coffee shop at 530 every Tuesday and then get coffee after we do five miles together, get coffee, but, and, or I would meet my, my girlfriend down at the canal side. We do seven miles, but you have, I totally agree with you. Find your people. <laughs> it's just, it makes the time go by quicker. I, I, it's not that I don't enjoy working out with people is I have so much going on. I'm just, when I, when I want to work out, it's just like, all right, I'm doing it. You know, I got to go now. Yeah. You know, that's the, the hard part for me for, with, with training with other people is I just, I'm very impulsive. Like yesterday, I'm just like, I'm gonna go do a half marathon. So I'm out of here. You know, it's, it, but I, I think training with a partner, it's, it, it's, it's just cool to develop those relationships over the sport. Um, you know, having maybe you get a partner and you target a race, you know, let's, we're, our goal is to do a 5k in three months. So let's train together, you know, every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday workout or um, just that support holding you accountable. You know, like if you're meeting your buddy or your two guys at 530 in the morning, you don't want to let them down. Or even if it's just someone else, yeah. like you don't want to stand them up. You know, they're getting up at 530 in the morning or they're getting up at five to be there at 530 in the morning. You don't want to let them down. You know, you want to be like, you're standing there at Tim Hortons or wherever, just, you know, yeah. making them feel like they woke up for nothing. And, you know, yeah. just, so that's, I think that's a good part of it too. Nice. I know there's, there's a lot yeah. of benefits to working out with us, but, but that's good advice. And with the, with the plan and just, cause I made the mistake too, of coming out of the gates, a hundred miles. It's ease into it. You know, learn, learn how to do it the right way. Because if you learn how to do it the right way from the beginning, you're going to be able to do it a lot longer with less injury. I totally agree with you. Um, that's how, kind of how I didn't quit running. It's so funny. I, I don't think I was, I, I know some people might disagree, but I didn't, my mom, my mom definitely doesn't think that my mom thinks I'm the best thing ever, but <laughs> I, whose mom doesn't come on. My, I wasn't naturally talented. Like I had to work really hard like I almost quit my first day of cross country because I hated it. Like people had to loop back to pick me up because I was so slow and I almost quit, but I didn't want to let my friend down who like was my best friend and like said, he got me to run cross country. I didn't want to like make her mad at me. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You think about like the, you know, butterfly flaps its wings and there's a hurricane in the Atlantic. Like think about if you just quit that day and I never got into running where you, you know, isn't it weird to think I've like that? I never went back or yeah, crazy. Yeah, I don't know. That's what, I, that's what drew me to, to endurance sports is I love the idea of it's a grind every day of you're just checking. If you have a plan, check your day off, and check your day off. And at some point, you're going to be able to turn around and quantitatively look at what you did, you know, leading up to that point. And it's like, if I do yeah. X, Y, and Z, I'm going to get better. I mean, there's just no doubt about it unless... I, I, I don't see a reason why you would never get better. You know what I mean? Like, obviously you're going to hit plateaus and you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're going to face obstacles. But I mean, the grand scheme of things, if you follow a plan and you stick to it, and that's what I like, I'm very task oriented. I like waking up and knowing, all right, Me I got too. this today. I got this today. You know what I mean? Um, but Kim, we are at an hour and 15 minutes. So we, uh, it flew by. Yeah. They did fly by. Thank you so much. Um, I've never been interviewed on a podcast before, so that well, was really first fun. girl, first girl on the podcast, and uh, you know it's your first pod, first thought is a new microphone, so there's a lot of firsts going on. It's great. Did we not I'll cover just, anything on the show today that you wanted to go over? <laughs> yeah, I'll just end it with one thing. I'm okay. just reminding me when you said first girl. Um, so I'm in this. Uh, there's a podcast, local podcast called the, the Negative Splits, and it's with my oh, friend I know them. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Bills it on. And um, I did uh, my first mile of the year with him and he, their podcast is a thing called fastest mile of the week. And so I just started getting into it as my speed work for the week. Um, and so I did my 501 last Saturday. I posted in our Facebook group. I'm like, you know, did 501, you know, trying to break five. And I, a lot of people commented like, for people, guys are being beat by a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't find offense to that. I don't find offense when people say I'm getting chicked or I'm getting smoked by a girl. I'm like flattered. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> good athlete's a good athlete. I mean, what the hell? Come on now. <laughs> you know, it's, it doesn't matter. That's awesome. I mean, it's you work your ass off, so you deserve it. I love it. Thanks. No, thank you so much. You And you are an inspiration to me because I would always see you Honestly, like I, like I did, I've done sprint triathlons 
And I tell you, open water swimming is so hard. Biking fast is so hard. And like, I could only do the run decent, but doing that all together is so hard. So I, I like that. all the credit. Iron like, sharpens so iron, excited. right? That's why we all are in this community together. You know, you inspire me. I didn't know I inspire you, but that's cool. And you know, it's uh, it's just a never ending like loop. You know, it's a never ending cycle of inspiration. And that's what I'm trying to, you know, build here. So that's all. I, I really appreciate you coming on and I wish you the best of luck. You know, once, once you're, uh, you know, once racing comes back on, I'm really excited to see what you're going to be able to accomplish because obviously you are, you know, at the peak right now of what yeah, I think you're scratching the surface. Can't wait to see your first 16 official 5K, you know, breaking that 17 minute barrier. It's going to be awesome. I know Thank you can. You. Yeah, yeah. So, what we'll do in the show notes afterwards is uh, if you can just shoot me those links, I'll put them yeah. in there. I'll put Kim's social media um, accounts on here as well. So, you can, you can check her out on social media and follow her journey. Kim's direct quote. I, 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 I quote directly, oh, I love oh, social man. media, she told me today. So she's a, per, she's a fun person to watch, so, or follow. I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Kim. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, next time we're in Buffalo, or next time I'm in Buffalo and I'm allowed in New York, maybe we'll, uh, you know, find a 5K and you can whoop my ass. How's that sound? Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, good talking to you. And thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. All right, thank you.